Welcome to Winning Streaks. I'm your host, Tanvir Mustafa, and today's guest needs no introduction, since he's actually the first repeat guest on the podcast. But in case you haven't listened to our previous episode together, go back and check it out. This man has more than $100 million in career sales to his name across 18 years in the industry and has had numerous finishes as a number one sales rep, most notably at Salesforce. He is now a seven-figure sales and mindset coach, and today is a special episode because this guest is actually my coach, who I've been working with over the past 14 to 15 weeks or so, and since then, he's become an invaluable mentor and friend. Today's episode is going to be somewhat of a live coaching call to talk about how I've changed since we started working together and what we still need to continue working on. Introducing Ian Koniak. Ian, welcome back. Good to see you, man. And it's been great working with you. Thanks for trusting me with, with your coaching. And yeah, man, it's a great friendship. Whenever I see your text and whenever I see anything from you, I always am happy to serve because I, I see your heart and I see where your your focus is. And it's just great to see a student of the game so committed to you know developing himself. So it's an honor, honor to be here, man. I love that, man. And I, I, I learned a lot of it in this process with you. I mean, we can start in a lot of places, um, but I guess a good place to start would be, you know, why I, I originally started working with you and why I originally reached out. Um, what was your like sort of reaction when we first got on the first, our first call together? Do you remember that one? Yeah, I, I think my first thing was you told me, I think you spent like 10 or 12 grand um, with another coach or something. So I, I I was really shocked that you would give coaching a second chance. I'm like, man, this guy is really committed to himself. And um, I was just impressed by you didn't give up on, you know, the, the concept of getting help and getting mentorship and coaching. And, you know, I, I've been impressed with you the whole time. There's been no... Um, dramatic shift in how I see you, but what I've what I've seen differently now versus where you were um, when we first started is, is is really the way you approach um, the approach things and, and your mindset and and definitely um, you're a little more chilled out. You know, in the beginning, I think you were kind of amped up and a little anxious and intense, and, and um, you're you're definitely. Uh, in, in, a, in a different headspace than when we started working together four months ago. But my reaction is this guy wants to develop himself. He's all in and I don't want to screw it up like the other coach did because he obviously paid a lot and he was disappointed. So I think we talked about that. I, I think we talked about what didn't work and we kind of made sure that that was um, something that wasn't going to happen with me. So I'm, I'm glad it's worked out. Yeah, I still can't believe I fell for it. For context, uh, it wasn't exactly coaching. It was more like a, an online course, like a like a crazy 12k like sales course on how to like create your own like sales business thing um and i should have not fell for it looking back like i can't believe i was that stupid it was all like marketing with like lamborghinis in the background and girls in the background and i'm like <laughs> man i just i just need knowledge and I, this they seem to know what they're talking about but when you get in it was just all those like sleazy pressure sales tactics like everything that a salesperson shouldn't be or at least that i that i didn't align with um, yeah. from a value standpoint. And uh, let's just say when I tried to get a refund, I couldn't get a refund. But, um, you know, I was still hunting. And the reason I reached out to you was I had just come off a 400% year. You know, I I, I had a really good year um, the previous year at Salesforce. But for me, as someone who's trying to improve regularly, like I really didn't want to put myself in a place where I got complacent. You know, I didn't want to sit down on my, on my laurels and be like, all right, I've figured everything out because I think that's where dreams die. You know, when we think we, when we settle um, and, you know, especially cause I was moving more up market at Salesforce. I knew I wanted to learn more about the strategic sales playbook as opposed to the transactional one. And to see someone who had come from Salesforce perform so well and put such relevant content out, I knew you would understand the problems I was having. So that was one key reason that I reached out. But the other one was that, you know, after having a 400% year, I remember at the beginning of that year, I had I had wrote down like what I want to, how much I wanted to make, you know, how much of a quota I wanted to exceed, et cetera. And I hit all those goals. But when I did, it was like a good dopamine high for like a couple of minutes and then <laughs> gone. Like I was, and then for the next like couple of months, it was just complete and utter lack of fulfillment. Like yeah. no motivation, no hard to get out of bed everything and you made one post that like really hit me and it was very similar you were like i had hit quota i had everything that i'd ever wanted like my dream house dream this dream that everything and you felt nothing i was like i know i know what he's feeling i've been there 
And I need to understand like how we got away from that. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's why I originally reached out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because I, I made a million dollars in 2017. I closed a t uh, eight figure deal at Berkshire Hathaway home services. And I wait, I mean, it wasn't a couple minutes. It was probably uh, a week of like riding the high, maybe, <laughs> maybe a few days. But I remember I sat in my car one, one day on the way to work and I'm like, is this it? At the time I was, it was 38 years old. I'm 43 now. This was five years ago. And I just sat in my car and I'm like, I feel depressed. And what is going on? And the reason for that is because you work your entire life to get to the pinnacle, right? Uh, of whatever that is. Maybe it's making president's club, finishing number one, making a certain income. And when you're chasing extrinsic motivators, extrinsic motivators being reputation with others, your status, money, things outside of you, uh, you know, there's always going to be disappointment because what's next? So I just remember thinking like, I worked for 17 years to get here, I imagine this would be some glorifying moment where I could like say I finally arrived, but I was the same person. And that was really like shocking. It's like I expected something magical to happen. And that's when I really knew that like chasing money was was not necessarily the answer to finding fulfillment and happiness. And I talk a lot about that, but I think it's hard unless you've gotten that, unless you've gone through that experience of like really getting to a high level because you think it's going to give you what you want. But once you arrive, it, it doesn't deliver. Um, and that's that's hard for a lot of people to understand or comprehend because because that's not where happiness comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And I almost felt like ignorant saying it, you know, because. I had to get there to make that realization. I had to yes. get to my goals to realize that it wasn't everything that I had dreamt it to be. Right. And yeah, I was probably exaggerating by saying a couple minutes. I probably spent a week celebrating. I did the thing that any salesperson, like this is a warning to anybody out there. If you're getting a major commission check, do not proceed to go and like spend most of it. Cause that's, <laughs> that's what I did. You know, I hope granted, you bought some real estate. I hope you got something <laughs> like pretty, pretty long-term. I did. So that, that ended up panning out. Um, I also went, you know, I, I'm a giver, you know, from a, when I make money, like I like to buy for other people. So was, uh, you know, was going on uh, with my girlfriend at the time, like extravagant dates and like buying stuff for my family. Did, did some things that I really enjoyed. Like, you know, this is why I love sales. It gives us the opportunity to, to make money. And yeah, while money doesn't buy happiness, it, it gives us the opportunity, um, to have moments of happiness. So I managed to pay off my parents' mortgage and Ooh. that was all great. Yeah, that was Ooh. all great. Dude. Um, phenomenal it was it was feel, awesome you feel great about those things those are longer so what was the problem what was that like describe to me how you were feeling you know yeah. a week or two after you spent this money felt great like what was that for you so so here was the thing is that i was trying to like fill whatever i was feeling with giving giving this away right like mm -hmm. trying to be a giver and, and trying to fill the void that way but no matter how hard i tried like i was still unfulfilled i would still go back home and be like well what's next yeah. And like, this is weird. If I have to keep asking myself what's next, then it never ends. Yeah. So um, this is, this is something, yeah. honestly, that, that this is what I call, I don't know if I call this, this, I probably heard it somewhere, but it's the achievers dilemma. Yes. Right? Yeah. We talked about achieving, this. You're always achieving and you're never happy. Even when you get what you want. I mean, I go through this still, I literally have everything I could ever dream of. And, and I got to retire at 43 and now I get to coach awesome people like you and change lives. And I'm still like, is this, you know, what I truly want? So it's like when you're a high performer, you're always going to be chasing. And the, the, the ultimate nirvana state is inner peace where you can be content, but still driven. So there, that's the goal for, for me. And it still is. And it's the goal for everyone I teach is how do you enjoy the journey? How can you be content without losing that drive? Cause he, people think this is what makes me, I'm an achiever. It's like a good thing, but it's not if you can't enjoy the ride and if your thoughts are negative and if your behavior is negative and your habits are bad, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So that finding that balance between being content and appreciating where you are and also striving for more without letting the striving for more overtake you and make you feel like you're insufficient is the, is the nirvana in, in the coaching world, at least. Yeah. I think we had one coaching session where we literally just compared side by side, what an abundance mindset looks like full of yeah. gratitude, being present, being calm, 
versus like an achiever's mindset, which is like driven, high velocity, et cetera, et cetera. And like, I honestly, at this point, I'm feeling like I want this to be my life's work, like figuring out the intersection of those worlds where someone can experience gratitude and growth at the same, same time, how someone can be yeah. present and be a high performer at the same time. And I'm, I've been falling in love with that, that process, that discovery, that research, but there's some tactical things that we did throughout our coaching together that has definitely gotten me in a state that, you know, we'll talk about some of the blunders I've had over the past couple of months, but uh, regardless, like still feeling quite fulfilled and quite happy uh, at the end of the day. So uh, I think the number one thing that we kickstarted with, and it was actually like partly in your intake form, which is why are you doing this? Like, why do you care so much? Why do you want to improve? And, you know, I think a lot of people think about it, but putting it down on paper and like actually reflecting and taking the time to think, um, definitely, definitely like put it all into perspective a little bit. And what I like about the way you sort of phrase it is that each year you sort of have a different why almost every 12 weeks you have a different why, but yeah. you got to constantly refresh because it can, it can get very easy to like walk away from what your why is. And for me, it was like, all right, you know, I want to show myself uh, again, that I belong in the, in the sales, in the strategic sales game. I want to be able to prove that to myself, to my colleagues, to my team. Um, and I want to put myself in a position where obviously I work on this podcast. I work on other things outside of work, um, where I can comfortably doing, do both knowing that I understand the playbook to, to be all in at, at what I do as a career. And, um, no, it's been super powerful. And, and I think for you, it's also like, I feel my best when I'm all in, like when you struggle, that's like today, like we talked about, right. You weren't <laughs> all in and you weren't, you missed some of your personal health routines. And as a result, it affected everything else. So being all in, in all ways, always it is the why, at least for me anyway, that's the why that always will come back is like, how do I maximize my day? And when I maximize my day in all areas, maximize my time at work, maximize my time outside of work. Um, and then repeat that to maximize the week and repeat that to maximize the month. It's amazing how much progress you can make in, in a very short amount of time and, and how much you can transform to be a person that's dependable, a person that's reliable. It's like, it's not about getting to the million dollars. It's about becoming the person that can consistently make a million dollars without sacrificing all the other things that are so critical in life to, to get there. Because- mm -hmm. Again, people have this misunderstanding of what it takes to be, you know, very successful. They think it takes full sacrifice. Oh, I don't want to give up my personal time. Well, I work 40 hours a week, maybe 45. But when I'm working, I'm working and I'm working on the right things. And when I'm not, I'm still working, but I'm working outside of work on my health, on running for a marathon or, you know, spending time with my family. Tonight, today's my anniversary. We're going out to a wonderful restaurant to celebrate. And like, I wouldn't ever sacrifice that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't sacrifice like it, it's the identity of the person that is capable of being happy and successful at the same time that really lights me up. And it's a lifelong pursuit. And if you want to make this your lifetime's work, the best place you can work on is within yourself to master this yourself. So then you can teach it. And that's the, the beauty of working with you is you still have those old habits, those thoughts, those behaviors, those patterns like come out and it's like that's normal that's a sign of progress so it's actually i like seeing that when you when you're struggling <laughs> yeah there's there was a lot i had to unpack uh, mentally you know during our time working together i think a few things so first of all congrats on the anniversary um Thanks, buddy. <laughs> se second um you know we're told all the time that like to be successful you need to sacrifice and while i agree to some extent, we've talked about addition, addition by subtraction so many times. And a lot of, a lot of the time people think it's, well, I got to take time away from my family. I got to take time away from my kids. I got to take time away from my relationships, from my health, from all of these things in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. We both called BS on that. And, and, you know, we really know what, what it is to remove not those things, but the other things that take up our, our time. So maybe you can talk through that a bit. Yeah, Ian. yeah. So I, I want to talk about addition by subtraction, and then I want to talk about the golden rule of time management. So these are two things that you're touching upon. It is bullshit, because if you can sit and browse for two hours on your phone, 
TikTok or if you can go on sports and watch six hours in a row, don't tell me you can't have time for your family, okay? It's selfish, it's narcissistic, and it's bullshit. So I'm all for relaxing, but when I'm relaxing, I'm with my kids. I'm going on a walk. I'm going on a hike. I'm in the pool. I'm chilling. Like I'm not, I'm, there's a big difference between relaxing and escaping, detaching, or disconnecting in unhealthy ways. So for me, again, being in the sobriety community, for me, one, one of the, one or the recovery community, one, one of the things I did is I said, what are the selfish kind of like um, consumption type of things that I'm doing that are purely to, to escape and that are coping mechanisms that are unhealthy? So I identified getting drunk, smoking pot, watching porn, playing video games, taking Adderall. Like there was a laundry list, the gambling. I was, I was no saint. Okay. And, and, and that, when I realized like when I was doing those things, I wasn't training for a marathon. I wasn't spending quality time with my family. I wasn't working on my side hustle. Like if you're choosing to do those things, then you're lying to yourself when you say you have to take time away from your family to go and work. Okay. So you need to identify those time stealers or time wasters that you can spend an hour here and there on, well, you know what? That adds to 10 to 20 hours a week if you add it up. The average American spends five to six hours per day on TV and social alone. Mm -hmm. It mind boggles me, okay? That is 35 to 42 hours a week. So don't tell me you don't have time for your kids, for your family, for other priorities, for your health, for exercise. You're choosing, you're choosing to spend your time in ways that are giving you dopamine, that are self focus and you know what to each his own but don't complain about it i'm not saying you can't do that but don't tell me you want to change or you don't have time or or give me bullshit reasons when you're taking three hours to play video games by yourself from you know 10 to 1 a.m and, and yet you you won't spend time so so this leads to this concept i i created called the golden rule of time management and, and what i this is really how you balance you know work self and health those are the three areas that you want to work on. You want to work on your work. You want to work on yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup and you want to work on your family, your connections, your, you know, significant other, your friendships. You know, those are the areas, those are the buckets that need attention. Okay. And the golden rule of time management states that the quality of time you spend at work determines the quality and quantity of time that you have outside of work. So what that means in simplest format is if I I'm supposed to be working, but instead I'm messing around, I'm, um, I'm, I'm doing busy work, I'm on Slack or email, or maybe I'm just giving it to distractions, I'm not working at all, okay? Then I feel guilty. I beat myself up because I didn't get what I needed to get done it, 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 in the day. And then actually I'm stressed at night. I'm anxious at night. I feel bad at night. That impacts my quality of my time with my wife and my kids. I can't let go. I'm thinking about work. And it probably impacts my quantity of time because I have to go back on my computer at nine o'clock and send out some stuff and take care of some stuff because I feel bad. So you're robbing your family of quality and quantity time. You're robbing yourself of quality and quantity time. So that rule, for me, it's when I'm working, I need to be working on the right things and actually putting in a full day. And, and that rule has made me a, a very, very successful entrepreneur in very short order because I'm working on the right things. I plan my day and you've seen my calendar, you see what it looks like and that's every day. So yeah. it's not about working 80 hours a week and grinding. Every other founder that I know that's running a business and doing the stuff I'm doing is killing themselves and they're stressed and they're unhealthy and their relationships are, are suffering. And I said, hell no, I'm not going to do that if I have my own business. I'm going to choose to work when I'm supposed to be working and I'm going to set boundaries for when I'm not working. So my boundaries are eight to six, six o'clock comes around. I am with my family, period. My phone is down. I'm going to be present because I know that Parkinson's law is in effect. Parkinson's law, if you don't know what that is, means work expands to fill the time allotted. So if I give something 12 hours, it'll take 12 hours. I only give it eight, nine hours a day. And that means I work as much as I can. And when I'm not, I let go and I just move it to the next day, period. So I don't feel guilty because I've done all I can. When you're doing all you can, that's when you could have peace to be present outside of work. Yeah. And so here's the rub. I remember looking at your calendar one time and I was like, holy shit, this guy's calendar He's working and then after work, he's spending time with his family. And it to me, from the outside looking in, it was like he never relaxes. But then I remember I sent you a text message after that. I was like, hey, Ian, like, look, man, I like to game. Like, you know, I, I enjoy gaming. It's kind of like my way of relaxing and checking out. And then you were like, well, why would you want to build a life that you want to check out from? Why wouldn't you want to be checked in? And then that's when I realized like, when you when you can be of service 
that's when you're at your best. And like, I don't want to give away all your, all your good stuff, but like, no, you're probably, I want you to give it all, give it all away. That's what, let the audience get your coaching for sure. That's probably that's one of the most powerful things you told me was like fulfillment consists of really three things, right? Growth, connection, and contribution. Yeah, and like yeah. your calendar should really reflect that. So when you're on social media, when you're, and look, I still game, like I still, I'll take, still take like 30 minutes a day to game, but I don't let it take over my day. I don't let it take over my work. And, um, yeah, when when you're doing things like scrolling through social media or um, you know, not spending time with the people you love or you're you're playing video games for extended period of time, alcohol, drugs, like whatever it may be, forget what what it is not doing for everybody else around you. It's 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 not good for yourself, right? The social media is making your brain mush and all of these activities are actually keeping your brain active. They're keeping your brain um, attentive. You're having to pay attention and it's not as relaxing as actually like you talked about cooking. Like now I cook more after, after days of work or, um, you know, uh, just slapping on some music. And like, if I go to the studio and dance or if I'm working out or whatever it may be, like those things are improving my health are improving my brain are improving my relationships. Like the, are improving the circle of, uh, sort of characteristics that we've talked about, which is like health, career, um, growth, finance, finance like all those things, spirituality. spirituality. Exactly. Yeah. So now I like try to structure my day around those tenets. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as a result, like I feel much better throughout the day. You vote with your time. You vote with your time. So if you say something's important to you and then you don't make time for it, then your words don't match your actions. And when your words don't match your actions or your thoughts don't ma match your actions, you are out of integrity with your values. And when you're out of integrity, there's misalignment and there's pain. So when your day reflects your values and your actions reflect your values, you can sleep really well at night. So my day is my morning routine where it consists of running and you know prayer and affirmation and planning my day and a cold shower and an energy shake. So I have my six things that I do and really doesn't take that long. Um, probably an hour and a half or so. Um, sometimes it depends how long the run is, but hour to an hour and a half. And then and then by the time you start your day, you're, you're feeling great. You've honored your commitment to yourself, okay? And now you can pour from a full cup. You have the energy to be sustained. And then in the nighttime routine is, is the same thing. It's like, I'm with my family, I'm cooking, I'm having a glass of wine, I'm relaxing with my wife, I'm just chilling. I, just to be clear, I, I, I am in recovery. I've not looked at porn for two and a half years. That is my vice. And that's something I eliminate entirely, but I still drink. But I haven't gotten drunk in two and a half years. Big difference. I haven't had a hangover in two and a half years. So, but I still have a glass of wine to relax my wife. We like wine. So for anyone who is confused by that, you know, <laughs> just to clarify, um, there are many types of addictions. So for me, I've cut off a lot of things that no longer serve me. And because of that, you get a lot of time back. The other thing that happens is you're not constantly craving dopamine, right? If you're always scrolling, if you're always playing video games, you're always craving dopamine. What happens is you always need a high. You always need a rush. You're always distracted. You're always on and you can't focus. And if you can't focus, you can't do deep work. You can't do deep work. You're not going to sell million or $10 million deals and you're not going to make millions of dollars, period. So all this ties to together. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So starting with those habits and really, you know, asking yourself, am I just escaping or medicating? Is this really something that is helping me get where I want to go? Like once you really do that and face yourself in the mirror, you'll see there's probably a lot of things that every one of us could identify and start to subtract. And that's where the power actually comes from is subtracting the things that frankly don't um, help us in our connections and our creation and our health, you know, in all the areas, those buckets that you and I talked about. Yeah. I, I, I got a ton of benefits from working together. Like I have a solid morning routine now. Um, like I said, like more fulfilled, get a lot more work done in less time, but like the biggest two things that I think I got, got out of, you know, consistently working with you is one, I know the answer to fulfillment now it's when your actions do not align with your aspirations. That is when you were out of fulfillment. That's when you have a complete utter lack of fulfillment because what you think you can be and who you are is completely disconnected. So then you have to reconnect your why, et cetera, et cetera. And then the second thing was like, primarily I did like reach out to you for like sales strategy, like understanding a little bit more of like the enterprise upmarket sales playbook. 
but what I found is that I got the most, like you're, you're obviously an expert in sales and I got a ton out of that. And, and we know that's been going really well, but I would say from a day-to-day -day basis, I've gotten the most out of just the mindset and personal development training. And in the mentoring I do with junior sales reps, BDRs, SDRs, and junior AEs, helping them change their mindset has provided the biggest impact in their numerical results. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I was just going to ask, like, do you find that as well? A hundred percent. Yeah. It starts like eighty percent of it, eighty twenty rule. So my my coaching program is one year, so we're four months in, and um, I I find you know I do it in three phases. One is the mindset, how we think. The second phase is the habits, what we do, and the final one is the skills, how we sell. But you can't sell effectively if your thoughts are negative, your attitudes negative, you're stressed, you're anxious, right? Our thoughts determine our actions, determine our results. So you've got to start with the, the mind. You've got to start with, you know, seeing an opportunity, seeing problems as gift, knowing your why, constantly resetting your why, being able to um, not, you know, have thick skin and, and realize like, hey, it's not about, you know, me, it's about them. And, you know, like for, I'll give you one example, like, you know, when someone rejects me or ignores me or ghosts me or whatever, my attitude, my mindset is one that fuels almost always closing that deal when I get ghosted. Why is that so important? Well, my mindset is really simple. It's this has nothing to do with me. They're an executive. They're busy. They got a lot going on. My job, knowing that I'm helping them and I'm serving them and they're better off with me than without me is to make sure I'm following up consistently and rigorously across all channels because this is good for them and they know it. And we had a great meeting. So of course, they're going to be following up religiously. Another mindset could be, I don't want to bother them. They didn't like the proposal. What's wrong with me? Why aren't they getting back to me? I don't want to, you know, piss them off. I don't want to be too pushy. And then they stop. And you know what? That actual act of persistence, nine out of 10 times, the client will call me back and apologize. This happens from CEO down to manager level where they say, I am so sorry. I didn't get back to you. I've been busy or I was on vacation. Or this priority was going on and this is going on. Yes, we want to do this. Thank you for following up. Let's get it done. So like, Fundamentally, that's just a simple mind shift of, of saying, hey, it's not about you. People are busy. You need to stay in front of them. And, and that's some some of the stuff I teach is like the mindset that salespeople have to have to be very, very successful. So I'm curious, like what was the mindset shift that you've been doing in your mentoring that's actually led to certain results for, um, you know, for, for, for the people that you coach? Yeah. A lot of the people that have reached out to me, it's usually around stress and burnout and like not feeling adequate and not being able to reach like their, their goals or their targets and, you know, feeling stressed every, every day. And, you know, I took them through somewhat of a similar exercise. It's like, okay, well, what are your goals and why? Like, what do you need to, why do you need to achieve these goals? And there's also the flip side, which I like, um, Ian, and we did some of this in your coaching, but I find it's a huge motivator for me, which is what does the dark side look like? Let me get power from my dark side. What does it look like if the worst case scenario happens? What if I don't achieve what I what I need to achieve? And what does that look like? So when I think about those things, that sort of gives me an extra kick in the pants. It's not yeah. the primary focus, but... I it, like that you call it the dark side because like knowing what happens, what life looks like if you don't change, if you don't take action, if you don't adjust what you're doing, like that's super powerful. I went through a Tony Robbins... Um, it's called Unleash the Power Within, it's where I met my wife. And um, I bring that up because it's our anniversary today, mm -hmm. nine years. But I met her, she was my firewalk partner. So yes. over know, calls. So, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. But anyway, he takes you through this pain exercise where like you think about all the things you want to change. And then what happens in um, a year if you don't change it? What happens in five years? What does life look like 10, 20? And literally people are like screaming and crying. And it's like this deep, like hour long, paint the picture of life at its worst because you didn't actually change. And it's, there's something really powerful there. And the year I finished um, number one at Salesforce was because of pain that I was in, frankly. Mm -hmm. I think pain is a huge motivator. And and uh, I had missed quota three years in a row. And unfortunately, you know, my, my um, you know, I had a, the last year I missed it by one deal. I've, I've shared this story before, but like it was the last day of the fiscal year. And I remember when I missed it, I just, I sat in the mirror, I stared at myself and my head was pounding 
I, it was out of body. My ears were ringing, my heads were pounding, and I, I couldn't recognize myself. I had so much pain, and I just said, never again. I never want to feel this way again. I will do whatever it takes. And that's when I first got into a mastermind, joined a coach, kind of like what you're doing, and, and, and the rest is history. I finished number one that year. So getting away from pain and never wanting to feel a certain way, oh, that's that's really good stuff. So I don't think it's the dark side per se. I think it's more like feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you failed and, and you know that feeling, like there's nothing worse. I mean, really, it's like your whole, you know, identity is crushed. And, you know, I, I, I again, I, I wouldn't feel that way now if I missed my quota because of the work I've done over the past six years. But fundamentally, that's very real and raw, right? Because yeah. especially for someone who's used to performing and achieving, and then you don't do it, it can rock your world. So I like that you do that. I like that you take them through that as well. Yeah, I, I find that, you know, for me personally, my goal is to help salespeople become more fulfilled because I went through it and I, would, I know it sucks. And I know people sort of my, my around my age, mid twenties, um, young salespeople go through this feeling of like feeling stuck or feeling lost. And I've been there and I know how much it, that, that feeling sucks. And we'll talk about how that still comes around every once in a while. Um, sure. But I look at how I approach it with the people I mentor is like a real life GPA. So the real life GPA is your score or it's your measuring stick for how fulfilled you are and it's you know your goal so for g for goal what is your goal and why your plan now what is your actionable plan to get there in the long run so what outputs do you need and then putting together action then getting to action so how do you action on your daily activities and it's not as simple like you know part of what we realized from working together was it's not as simple as being as being like all right i need to make 100 calls a week so that means i need to make 20 calls a day easy for everyone to say, easy to put on paper, can be tough to execute if you don't have the right formulas in place. If you don't have the morning routines, if you don't have the habits, if you don't have the addition by subtraction, if you don't have the mindset, if you don't have the why, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's the piece that I work on is like, what is the gap between a plan and an action? And if you can go to bed every day, like once, once you have your daily plan or your weekly plan, then I tell the people I mentor, throw the outputs out the window, throw that ACV number out the window, throw that pipeline uh, number out the window. Now you just know what you got to execute on on a day-to-day -day basis for the next 10, 12 weeks. And as long as you succeed in that, you will be fulfilled because that's when you enjoy the journey and not the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to trust the process. You have to not be, it's so easy to like, think about this isn't working or, you know, it, it's just amazing. Like how God, I, I believe this and it's not whatever you want to call it, God, the universe, not to get too uh, spiritual on you, but like, it's amazing how opportunities come to people that are consistently working and who care and who are just doing the right thing. It's like things will come out of nowhere all of a sudden, you know, that last call on a Friday or this opportunity referral or this current customer that just called in. It's like, even if it doesn't come from that particular thing that you were doing, it'll come. Yeah. You d I don't see people failing. There's a guy, a coach, um, Matt, he, he talked a little yesterday on the, on the call and he's like, I do four days a week, two hours of prospecting a day. Well, that might sound like a lot. That's eight hours. Mm -hmm. And it's a non-negotiable for him. He does eight hours of prospecting a week out of, you know, 40, that's 20% of his time. And, and he has developed more pipe and closed more deals by focusing on that process. That's a non-negotiable than he had previously in, in nine months. So he's having his three biggest, and it's like, it sounds simple, but you're right. It's like, it takes resilience. It takes, you know, discipline. It takes um, consistency and, and you just kind of have to neutralize your fear around or your pain around the, the actual activity. See, a lot of times the pain comes from the stories we tell ourselves. It comes from the thoughts around the thing rather than the thing itself. Prospecting is just prospecting. Mm -hmm. But if we say, I hate this, I don't want to do this. I can't do it. I don't have enough knowledge. I don't know what I'm doing. I need to over-research, whatever. Like that, that's all basically our story. Yeah. If you say that same event and we say, Hey, this is an opportunity to help people. If I don't call, I have no chance. This is part of the job. This is how I create my pipe. This is, you know, an opportunity to make mega bucks. This is the proven path. Like the whole story changes and then the emotions change and then the actions change. So it does all start with thoughts and stories about whatever it is that you need to do. And if yeah. your thoughts suck about the thing, then you're not going to do it, period. You're going to procrastinate. You're going to avoid it and you're going to fail. Yeah. Well said. Now, it hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you recall a conversation. I, I called you at the end of the end of Q2. Do you remember what I said? You said, I just hit my, I just missed my quota 
and I feel like shit, what do I do? Something along those lines. Like you felt, you said like, I hit it for two years or no, I just missed it. And, and yeah, that's, you were, you were not in a good headspace for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was the first time I'd missed a quarter at sales forces and SDR, BDR, and then an AE, um, whether, whatever my, my you know, keep KPI was. And, uh, for the moment it sucked. Like I had to sit in it and be like, all right, what, what went wrong? But then like shortly after, I think normally I would have sat in that for a much longer time, but because I knew I had done mostly everything I could, um, I was able to sit with it a little bit better and I was able to sort of get over it quickly and be like, all right, I got to be objective about this. What went well, what didn't go well, and what do I need to improve going forward? Mm -hmm. Um, so worked on a lot of addition by subtraction, but I think the, like for you to, you know, be able to say, all right, give yourself some grace. Like, you know, it's not always supposed to be peachy and like things get tough and that's when you got to make the adjustments and, um, and so on and so forth. So, um, you can do all the work in the world. And this is what I teach people is like, you can do everything. Like I'm a regular prospector, right? I, I prospect damn near every single day, manage my time really well, focus on the 80, 20 rule. Um, mm -hmm. I like to think I'm, I'm fairly efficient with my time most of the time, uh, especially yeah. after we started working together. Um, but sometimes those results don't come and you have to be okay with that. And you have to be able to sit back and be like, I gave it, I gave every day my best foot forward. Most of the time, my best foot forward. Now, how do I, how do I improve? Now, here's, here's the, here's the interesting thing. I didn't just tell you, give yourself grace. I also told you, I'm glad you missed your quota. Do you remember yeah. me saying that? Yeah, you and did. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and why did I say that? Do you remember why I said I was glad you missed it? I think something along the lines of like, you needed that. Like I needed that. Yeah. To be able to put myself in a position where I can still remain happy and fulfilled while I'm on, you know, on paper in the red, so to speak. Yeah, so to speak. I, yeah. I, 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 that's exactly right. It, it's for you to value yourself and value your worth and know your worth when you're someone who struggles, just always chasing, chasing, feeling like you are your achievements to have missed that and to feel, and you know what, life goes on. I'm okay. And actually I'm going to come out even stronger is really good for you. Because you can't experience joy until you felt the pain of failure. So I said, that's a good thing. The other thing I, I sense, and, and again, I, I have beliefs that may or may not be um, uh, may or may not be accepted, but I, I think there's forces in the universe, and I think specifically God rewards us greatest after moments of our biggest adversity. And I believe that because I've gone through recovery and nearly lost everything. I also missed quota three years in a row and then finished number one. I also got injured before training for the half marathon and then ran it faster than I ever have. So it's like before these triumphs, I've always, my biggest deal at Salesforce came a few months after I lost my biggest deal and I thought my world was you know ending. So it's like, if you keep going and you bounce back after these failures, typically the reward is, double or triple what, you know, what, what, um, you, you lost. And, and I know that's coming for you. I, I have faith because you're consistently showing up and that's just how it works. It's just how it works. It's like the more we want it, it's like success, wild success is always right on the other side of our biggest failures. And, and I, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works that way, but I just think we're always being tested to see how bad we want it. And we're most tested during those times of, of getting knocked down. Cause you could have easily said, what's the point? I should just do something else. And, you know, just like, I don't want to do this and justify, but instead you say, no, let's go. Life will move on. Let's keep focusing on the process. And my guess is that you're having a pretty good August. We haven't talked about it, but my guess is that you're probably having one of your better months. Is that fair to say? And you're probably going to have your best quarter ever. I, I would, I would imagine. Um, in fact, I would be willing to bet on it because I've seen this thing happen over and over and over again. And there are forces at work way bigger than us that reward people who stay the course, period. It's it's so funny you say that. So in the two weeks following that phone call, I've sourced my three biggest deals of the year mm -hmm. and managed to get like talk time, meeting time with three execs that I've been prospecting since the beginning of this year, like nonstop like weekly, bi-weekly, whatever you want to call it, like going after these, these are my strategic accounts, right? The ones that I, that um, focus Your on that 80, 20 rule, right? Yeah. My accounts and finally got meetings on them and have three big projects going on one with each of them again. Um, 
So I agree with you. I think the universe finds a way to to reward hard work. And here's the thing: you you cannot lose if you do not give up. You cannot lose if you do not give up. And that's something that I'm trying to keep keep top of mind. But the other thing that I really need to keep keep top of mind, and you know, I've talked about this dozens of times, and I'm sure we will talk about it dozens of more times, is inevitably patience. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I'd love to hear your perspective. Last, yeah, I'd love to hear your perspective. Last few minutes. I, tell me, because I know we have to drop in about seven minutes. But tell me how you struggle, and I can coach you and, and give you guidance because I know that's part of what you want in the areas that you struggle. And I know specifically with patience, that's a big one for you because it comes up all the time <laughs> when you text me or you know leave me voice notes. But give me kind of your struggles, and then I will tell you how to deal with it or how I deal with it. Yeah, inevitably, I've always been someone that has lived in the future. Like that's 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 something that I've struggled with for a long, long time. And luckily, I've I've put together a meditation routine, which is helping me be more calm and present. But I'm a salesperson. I like to make more money. I like new opportunities that help me raise my game, raise my level. And you and I have talked about, you know, whether it's taking this podcast to the next level or doing like a side hustle, side hustle coaching business or whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, I messaged you the other day being like, man, I know you left the like corporate world at like 43. Do I have to wait till I'm 43? Like what? Not Salesforce, not that I'm in any rush to get out, <laughs> just disclaimer, but I definitely, I'm always looking for ways to level up and, and your advice was one. When you learn to be where you are, that's when you are most powerful. Um, and I have my positive, my affirmations, and I used to think that affirmations were were BS, to be honest. But once you study stuff like the subconscious mind and neuroplasticity and stuff like that, you learn that it's legit. But I think now what I might need to do, still haven't done it yet, but I will, is like write on a sticky note, like patience, and write my affirmations on a sticky note and put it on my bathroom mirror. So I have to look at it every morning as a, as a conscious reminder because for me, it's very easy to revert back and get lost. I always have this itch in the back of my mind being like, all right, you have to do more. Like you got to be doing more. Why aren't you doing more? Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I, I, will, with. I will say um, what you struggle with is what I would call a calling. And, and it's not something that many people will relate to. Okay. And I know this between you and me, and it's the work that you're doing. You feel called to do something to better the world, to better the lives of others. And when you're working in a sales environment, when you're working for a corporation, any corporation, and when most of your job is spent on helping companies succeed, but you feel called to do something bigger in the world and have an impact on individuals, that calling is always going to be there. Okay. So that's the first thing that I would advise you is if you're feeling a calling, that means you're blessed. Because a lot of people have no idea what they want to do and they don't have that voice and they just feel lost, right? So if you feel called, even if it's not crystal clear to serve the world and do something bigger, you are blessed. And that is a wonderful place to be. So where does patience come in? Okay, patience comes in in saying the path I'm on is the exact exact path I need to be on to get where I eventually will, will go and God will guide me and the world will guide me and the universe will guide me in the time that is perfectly aligned to when it's meant to be. So in other words, you have work to do still. You have work to do still in your current role. You have work to do in, in sales, in the world. You have work to do most importantly on yourself. You have work to do in pa building patience. If you're going to teach mindfulness you're, for salespeople, you're going to have to cultivate mindfulness within yourself. So this is the opportunity to do so. And that's the beauty of this is when you, when you've seen this over and over again, because I, I, I know where you're coming from and it's a good place. And I want, I would encourage you to fulfill and scratch that itch through this podcast, through mentorship, and you're doing those things, but where you need grace is to realize I am doing enough and I am doing all I can. I'm giving my all to Salesforce. I'm mentoring people. I just got engaged. I'm running a podcast. Shit, man, what more can you do? So that's where you need to really appreciate everything you are doing versus telling yourself you're not doing enough. And that is the, the work that you still need to be doing. I love that. And I've definitely taken it to heart. You know, when I think about the three pillars, growth, connection, and contribution, it was a contribution one that I wasn't feeling as much. So yeah. now what I've done is, all right, how can I give without expectation, without trying to get, receive anything in return? How can I sort of 
dip my toes in the water um, through mentorship, through whatever it may be. Um, week this weekly, you know, accountability call that I've been doing every Monday, this podcast, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and I think it's a good start, but I'm I'm trying not to lose lose sight of the of the main goal, and I'll definitely put up that that sticky note um, soon. But Ian, this is this has been awesome, man. Where can people learn more about your coaching program and learn more about how to work with you going forward? Yeah, we'll talk to Tanvir if you're if you're listening. <laughs> you need to work with me. But if you are interested, I mean, you've gotten kind of a taste of what I teach today because we're 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 doing a live session. We're talking about things, and you know, we go really really deep with each of these principles. We break it down into your life. What do you need to subtract? What does your calendar look like? And I work with you hands on to optimize your your life so you not only can perform your best, but also you have that fulfillment and you know, self inner peace that, that I think is missing from the lives of so many salespeople. So for anyone who, who this resonates with and who needs help, I'm here. My coaching program is fully sold out until December, but if you are interested, get on the wait list, the wait list website is untap your sales potential.com slash wait list. Again, untap your sales potential dot com slash waitlist. You can sign up for the waitlist. If you want to learn more about the program, just go to untapyoursalespotential.com and you can read all about it. There's a curriculum there. There's all the modules. And um, if you are not ready for coaching or don't want to invest in yourself, totally cool. Go to my YouTube. I have tons of free trainings available there or go to my LinkedIn, follow me there and send me a DM and I'll get you on my newsletter. I send out a free training every single week for salespeople. So tons of way to learn and grow. But if you really want to transform, definitely uh, try to work with me. And uh, I'd love to get on there quick because there, there's only, I only have so much capacity. So December, it'll open up and uh, love to support you any way I can. I'll be sure to link that all in the show notes. And I know this episode was a lot around the mindset stuff, but there's a whole other sales coaching side that we didn't talk about today. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can go check out my previous episode with Ian. I'll also link that in the show notes and you can see a lot of where where his soul, sales perspectives and, and knowledge comes from. But Ian, this was fire as always, man. Thank you so much and appreciate all the coaching and mentorship that, that you continue to provide me. It's it's really I, been an awesome journey. I, I am always here for you and, and I am so excited about what you're going to do for the world and really fulfilling your mission and, and finding your mission because it, it, it will be revealed in time. And just to wrap it up, I'm I'm also in the same thing. I still go through that idea of I'm not doing enough and I'm doing so much, but I still tell myself like it doesn't go away. I tell myself I could do more work with addiction recovery. I tell myself I can do more work with getting people in, in, in happy marriages. I mean, there's all kinds of, as you give, when you're all in, you become very well-rounded and you have a lot of areas you can help people with. And, and that's the beauty of life is it's a continuous learning journey forever. So just that grace is something that no matter where you are, just know that you have to give yourself and it doesn't go away. You're always going to feel like you're not doing enough. So the more you can temper it and just kind of tell yourself I'm doing all I can and that is enough. The, the, the happier and the more fulfilled you're going to be. And that's a lifelong pursuit to, to find that inner peace while still, you know, having that ambition inside of you to, to be all you can be because we only live once. So might as well, you know, do it, do it as well as we can. So yeah. appreciate, appreciate you and excited to see what you're going to do next. I love that, man. Thanks for coming on to winning streets again. Hopefully I'm sure we're going to get a third episode done at, at one point, but I always feel so refreshed after one of these conversations. So thank you, Ian, and look forward to doing this again. All right, buddy. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.